Joining me now is John Almquist, Athletic Training Director for Fairfax County Public Schools, and Emily Buell, a senior at Woodson High School. Welcome. We're here to discuss a really important and serious topic today, which is concussions, right? And um, Emily's going to share her experience in a minute. But um, John, tell us for our viewing audience, what is a concussion? Basically, it's a mild brain trauma, and uh, it's, it, it's a metabolic cascade of events that take place chemically within the brain when it gets uh, accelerated or decelerated very quickly. Mm -hmm. And why are we um, focused on concussions in our student athletes? Well, these do happen, and they happen often, but what's important is that it also affects their ability to learn. And it, it affects their ability to retain information as presented. It, it, uh, you, when a person has a concussion, usually it takes longer for them to actually do the same tasks they have done previously. And they also have a problem getting information back out, like mm -hmm. in testing. So mm -hmm. it really does. It, it's one of the sports injuries, common sports injury, that uh, directly impacts their academic achievement. And I, we were talking before the show, and you're seeing uh, a, a, an increased number of concussions, correct? Tell us why that is. Yeah, we've seen, we've tracked uh, injuries over the last, uh, over a dozen years now, and we've seen a steady increase in the number of concussions that have been reported uh, with a, a, a pretty significant increase in the last few years. And I think there's a lot of reasons why. I think the definition of concussion has actually changed recently. There's a lot more science out there, out there so we're, we're pushing the public, the coaches, the, the student athletes, the parents, as well as the media has done a good job in letting everybody know that these concussions are dangerous situations that they need to deal with and not minimize and not uh, avoid and not uh, you know, put away and say, you know, I'm tougher than that, I can go through it. Uh, concussions are important. If you don't treat them properly and rest properly in the early stages, a lot of times the uh, issue will go on for longer and longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. You have more educational time loss and that's a real problem. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that by everyone in knowing what the symptoms are, and some of them are s extremely subtle and mm -hmm. they, they go in and out as a, uh, with the um, level of, of workload mm -hmm. and, and rest, etc. Uh, that it's important for everybody to recognize that this is something you have to do something about. You need to get out of harm's way. If you are playing, get stop playing. Uh, be checked uh, by a, a medical professional. Uh, make sure you don't try to push things through. This is not the injury to try to run through. Mm -hmm. So Emily, you suffered a concussion playing soccer, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell us about your experience. So basically what happened, it was like a corner kick and so it came in and like I headed the ball out and then this girl came in and she couldn't stop and so she headed me in the head and cracked my head open. And so Miss um, Vickis, our athletic trainer at Woodson, she went and she like rushed the field, like make sure both of us were okay and then she pulled us both off to the sidelines and then um, she basically just by her like asking me a few questions and like examining me, she like knew I had a concussion. So she knew it was possible and like because of bleeding in my head. Um, I had to go to the emergency room. So then um, at the emergency room, they told me I didn't have a concussion. So it was kind of confusing and like I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so, um, but the next day I went to Miss Vickis and she like did testing on me, like the actual test, concussion test, and like confirmed that I actually had a concussion. And then throughout the process, she basically, um, like I met with her every single day, like she kept me sane in the whole process, I guess. Like she helped me organize things with teachers and everything, and she did an awesome job. So and how long did it take you to recover? I had it, well, about four to five months, I guess. Wow. So it was a long time. Um, I actually got a 504 plan because, um, like at first, my teachers didn't really co cooperate that well with it, but with Ficus's help, she let me um, like have a better relationship with them and the counselor understood like what I was going through because she was able to explain it better. Mm -hmm. so. Now John, you were saying that you were seeing these concussions in all kinds of sports, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, uh, it, yeah, football obviously is the highest number. That's a direct mm -hmm. contact sport and one of the purposes of the, uh, the uh, objectives of the sport is to make contact with each mm -hmm. other. But it does happen in every sport we have um, mm -hmm. to a lesser extent. Uh, but the girls sports, we have soccer and lacrosse have pretty high incidence of concussion. And we've been tracking this over uh, several years, like I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. and they are going up across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which means that you know there's good signs. That's a good sign in the sense that more people are recognizing mm -hmm. it, and we're doing something about it early. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most dangerous places to be is at, at a school where they, they say they don't have any concussions or don't have very many, because I think what's happening is they're they're missing them, mm -hmm. and when they miss them, they continue to play, mm -hmm. and that's usually what is what causes the long-term uh, detrimental effects. 
Emily, what were your symptoms? Um, so basically I was just tired all the time, like all the time. Like I would have really good days where I would feel awesome in the morning and then throughout the day I would be exhausted. Like I would have to um, like go home, take a nap right away. Like in part of my 504 plan, I got to take naps during school because I just, I couldn't make it through the day. Like the lights bothered me so much and sound, like I couldn't even focus. Like the smart boards in school, like in our classrooms, I couldn't even look at. So it was like really hard to take in what the teacher was telling me all the time. So. John, are there other symptoms that parents should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. I, the first symptom is most common is headache. Uh, and it's usually a pressure headache, pressure type headache. Dizziness is another thing that follows. Fogginess, confusion, um, uh, it can also affect your sleep. Uh, and then there's some emotional issues that can come up where you could, you know, usually you're kind of easy going person and have, get mad and irritable and things like that. So anything that's different from your normal and, and what's a kid's normal, what's a teenager's normal, we haven't defined that yet. But whatever that particular person's normal is, when there's something different, that is a sign. That's a potential sign that there's been a concussion, that there's been trauma. And those are key things. Right. I know you have a lot of good resources on your website, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And so we'll direct our viewing audience to check that out. Yes, and absolutely. And we have the concussion education program that is required by the state. The Student Athlete Protection Act was uh, enacted two years ago. And every student athlete plus a parent has to complete a concussion education mm -hmm. program before their child is allowed to get on the field in, in, in uh, Virginia schools. Very good. That's excellent news. And Emily, glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you.